Hello and welcome back to Tips and Time Savers. I'm Danny Rocks. Today's lesson is my response to a viewer request to create an Excel pivot table that is based not on a calendar year, but rather on a water year, also known as a hydrologic year. Now, if you use fiscal years, you're going to want to pay attention to this lesson. I must admit that prior to this request, I had no idea that a water year or a hydrologic year existed. In the Northern Hemisphere, this exists from October 1st through September 30th of the following calendar year. So over here, traditionally, we'll have the date and the daily flows for the water. What we want to do is we want to add in two additional fields before we can create our pivot table. So the water year will say October 1st 1931 actually belongs to the water year 1932 so let's use the if function equals if and I'll use control a to bring up the function arguments dialog box I want to use the month function so M O N T H left parentheses and then point to the first cell in the data set right parentheses and say if it's going to be greater than or equal to 10 in other words 10 October is going to be the first month in the water year. So if it's greater than or equal to, what I want to do is I want to increment the actual calendar year. So I will use the year function, left parentheses, point to the first cell in the data set, right parentheses, and say if it's greater than or equal to 10, in other words 10, 11, or 12, then I want to say let's plus 1, let's add 1 year value of false year function left parentheses first cell in the data set right parentheses and say plus zero in other words leave it alone so over here in our first cell we have October 1st 1931 and it's greater than or equal to 10 so we want to increment it to make that year to be the water year 1932 if it's not greater than or equal to 10, let's leave it as the current year. Now let's copy this down. So double click over here in the autofill for that formula. And now let's use control down arrow. So we'll see that for the calendar year, September 30th, 2006, that belongs as the last month in the water year 2006, whereas October 1st, 1931 is the first month in the water year 1932. Now let's use the choose function to add in the quarters for each of our years equals choose and choose is a really very very useful but very very much underutilized function. And again, I'm going to use the Control A keyboard shortcut to bring up the function arguments out of the box. So I'm going to use the month function and say month, left parentheses, point to the first cell over here. And now what I want to say is, all right, the month that it's going to extract is going to be 10. Well, number one is going to be January. January is actually going to belong to the second quarter of our hydrologic year. So double quotation mark, and I'm going to say quarter two. So January, February, and March are going to be in second quarter of the hydrologic year. Control C to copy select control v select control v now the fourth value in other words april is going to belong to the third quarter so double quotation mark qtr space three double quotation mark let's select it and now let's use tab the fifth value in other words may belongs in the third quarter tab Control V control, uh, is in the third quarter. Now the seventh value, July, is going to be in double quotation marks QTR for double quotation mark. Let's select it. Control C to copy. Tab Control V. Tab Control V. Tab. And now the tenth month, October, remember, is going to belong into the first quarter of our water year, our hydrologic year.
All right, and again, let's select it, Control C to copy it, Tab, Control V, Tab, Control V. And now let's click OK. So October is in the first quarter of the water year 1932, even though it's in the calendar year 1931. And again, let's double click the autofill. Now we're ready to create our pivot table. So with one cell selected, let's come over into the insert tab on Excel 2007, Excel 2010, and say pivot table. And in this case, I want to have the pivot table created on this worksheet. Let's select cell E5 and click OK. Now let's just move this over here. Now the first thing that I want to do is I want to separate out the dates. So the dates which are in column A, I want to group them so that I can group them by month and by year. So I select one cell, Pivot Table Tools, Options, come over here and I want to group the field. I want to group them beginning at October 1st, 1931 ending at uh, October 1st, 2006, by months and by years. Not by quarters, we'll see that in a minute. The reason I want to group them by months and by years is I don't want to have aggregate October through all those years. I want to separate it by, uh, by month, I want to separate it by years. Now let's come over here and what we want to do is we want to change the default setting. So Pivot Table Tools and come over here on to design and then on the report layout let's turn this into the tabular view all right now let's add in how we're actually going to summarize this information by daily flows and we want the daily flows to be over here in the values we don't want it to be the count what I want to do is right mouse click over here and say what I want to do is I want to summarize it by the average. And while I'm over here, let's right mouse click and change the formatting. So value field settings, number format, let's make this a number and let's make this with zero decimal places. Okay, so now I have the average by the calendar year. I don't want the calendar year. So I'm going to remove the calendar year by selecting it and just clicking it to move it away. And what I want to do is I want to put in the water year, but not over here as a sum. I want to put it in as a row label. So here is the water year. And now I also want to put in the hydrologic quarter over here in the row label. So I want to have the uh, water year the hydrologic calendar and the date and then the average. Now we have subtotals over here. Let's get rid of the subtotals. We can get rid of the subtotals by pivot table tools design over here in the subtotals. Let's say do not show the subtotals. All right, so over here now I have the average of the daily flows. But what I want to do to make this really work is I want to have over here, let's change the label for the date, which is our original field. And we'll use field settings and say, let's change that to be the month. And click OK. And now I want to move that month and put that over here into the column. So select it move it over here into the column and let's just move this over here. So now for the average of the uh, water year which is 1932 quarter one remember begins with October so October November December and then I have all of my information set up the way that I want to have it. So there are several steps that you have to take. I, I, I must admit you're going to probably have to go through this two or three times to really get your head around it. But that is how we can group our information by a dimension which is not a calendar year, not a calendar quarter, but by some other quarter. And I'll look for you in the next lesson.